This is Twit. Okay, so the Ethereum uh, classic blockchain was hit, um, I think it began on the 5th. I've got it in the notes and we'll come to it. Uh, with and and ex- with what is an expensive fi- known as 51% attack. Um, when this podcast first described the detailed operation of the Bitcoin blockchain in what was actually a classic podcast for us, because uh, I remember I you know dug into it. Oh, it was great. Uh, and, oh. Read that so, so, and read Satoshi's original white paper, and I was I you just were raving was, about it. You oh thought, my this goodness, thing's amazing! This is the coolest thing yeah. I've ever encountered. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? You were right because blockchain, you know, you can weigh in or out on cryptocurrencies t- and Bitcoin, yeah. but blockchain, there's no doubt, is a very uh, valuable innovation. Yeah. yeah. Um. So we mentioned that one of the key assumptions. In, in fact, the cornerstone assumption for the security and trustworthiness of any um, proof-of-work blockchain-based technology is a large community pool of honest participants who mutually concur and authenticate blockchain events. It says that? Because that really rules it. If I'd saw, seen that, I would have said, oh, well, this will never work. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's got to be yeah. honest? <laughs> Yeah, um, actually, that's my uh, jargon. Oh, that's your line. Pa- All right. <laughs> pa- page three of Satoshi's original white paper, which was titled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer electronic cash system, it stated, quote, if a majority of CPU power is controlled by honest nodes, the honest chain will grow the fastest and outpace any oh, competing chain. That's intriguing. So he understood even, you know, before this had happened, when it was just a white paper, that this was important. So stated another way, the block for the blockchain to remain secure, no single actor must ever be able to obtain a majority of the chain's total processing power. Because someone who is able to dominate the chain rules the chain, Uh-oh. and uh huh, and is thus able to cheat others, and that's what has been happening since January fifth to the Ethereum Classic blockchain, at the expense that is they had to expend significant computation but the ex- at the expense of significant computation which was expended attackers have been able to rewrite history they rolled back and reorganized the ethereum classic blockchain and were thus able to double spend by recovering previously spent coins and transferring them to a new entity. I've got a link in the show notes to the Coinbase.com blog. Coinbase's security engineer, Mark Nesbitt, wrote in the blog about these events. He said, quote, the, f- the function of mining is to add transactions to the universal shared transaction history known as the blockchain. This is done by producing blocks, which are bundles of transactions, and defining the canonical history of transactions as the longest chain of blocks. If a single miner has more resources than the entirety of the rest of the blo- of the network, this miner could pick an arbitrary previous block from which to extend an alternate block history, eventually outpacing the block history produced by the rest of the network and defining a new canonical transaction history. So, and that's what happened. They posted a timeline. Late on the evening of Saturday, January 5th, our systems, he wrote, alerted us to a deep reorg in ETC that contained a double spend. 
our on-call engineers responded to the alert and worked to confirm the report through the night. We determined that we would temporarily halt send-receive interaction with the ETC blockchain in order to safeguard customer funds. This meant that customers who tried to send or receive ETC on Coinbase Consumer or Pro were unable to complete their transactions. On the morning of Sunday, January 6th, we posted an update on status.coinbase.com. And Leo, you should go there. Stating that due to unstable network conditions on the Ethereum Classic Network, we have temporarily disabled all sends and receives for ETC. Buy and sell is not impacted. All other systems are operating normally. We performed an analysis on Sunday afternoon and evening to confirm the pattern and determine the key details of the double spend attacks. Beginning Sunday afternoon, we observed eight more incidents, all containing double spends. Out of an abundance of caution, we did not put out a blog post prior to legal and technical review. A false alarm could have inadvertently caused market instability. On Monday, January 7th um, morning, after legal and technical review, we finalized our public analysis and posted to our blog and social media accounts. And, of course, that went into the news. I didn't I didn't put in the show notes. It is there on status.coinbase or in this blog posting, the individual breakout of double spends, which ended up um, – ended up – I thought I had it. Oh, yeah, here it is. 219,500 previously spent coins wow. were respent, netting the attackers $1.1 million wow. in ETC. And on that page that, that you showed, uh, of note is the fact that right now, today, Everything is green except that one. Yeah. ETC is still uh, their their buy and sell or their their ascend and receive is still uh, disabled, uh, and they they have it down for maintenance unquote. But really, what's happened is uh, we, don't, that we don't control it anymore. <laughs> it's gone. The, yes, uh, that Ethereum. Uh, chain can no longer be trusted. Now, this is uh, not. This is a fork of Ethereum. Ethereum Classic. Yes, it's uh, the classic. didn't affect so, Ethereum. Correct. So the real question is: Yeah, obviously it's a smaller cryptocurrency. Could this happen to Bit Bitcoin or one of the bigger ones? That well, would be awfully it, hard to do, right? Yes, it has historically. It's happened in the past. There, there was a fifty-one percent attack. I mean, th these are generically called fifty-one percent attacks on blockchains because. For exactly this reason, as as Satoshi observed, uh, it you you have to have a you have to have a majority of honest uh, uh, nodes involved in validating these transactions. If any one entity obtains majority control, they're able to take over. And we've um, in, in the past we've touched on this where. There, it's been like at risk. There, there have been single entities that sort of were approaching 50, like fifty percent, and people that got people worried. Uh, and th there, there were brief play, uh, instances where someone had more than uh, than fifty percent. They had a majority, but as you note, the bigger these get, the more they sprawl. And then the more difficult it becomes for any one actor to obtain a majority. So there is safety in size because it's just, you know, it just becomes a, a, an insane amount of processing power in order to pull this off. But uh, it can happen.